Today, I like to have a, a very interactive uh, session. Uh, so if you have any questions along the way, just please feel free to uh, to uh, unmute yourself or write in the chat. Um, I'm more than happy to uh, to take any questions you have uh, along the way. So this uh, session, uh, can you see my screen all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, good. So this session is titled uh, Boosting Power BI Productivity with uh, Tabular Editor. And this is a session I've had uh, many times in the past uh, at, at many different user groups uh, all over the world. Um, so the, the motivation for this session is more or less, you know, we all love Power BI. We love Power BI Desktop and, and we love the, the things that we can do with data modeling and DAX and so on. But sometimes when you start to get uh, into building real world uh, models uh, that have you know many tables many meshes and so on power bi desktop is not always the optimal uh, tool for, uh, for for maintaining this this type of uh, of large and, and complex model and that's where where tabular editor comes in uh, to help you improve your uh, your productivity so uh, first off, uh, just a little bit about myself. My name is Daniel. Um, I work as a CTO for a company called uh, Tableau Editor APS, uh, and I'm also a, a principal architect uh, for a Danish consulting company called Capacity, uh, where I've been working for the past almost uh, 10 years. I'm also a Microsoft Data Platform MVP, and I've been working with the Microsoft BI stack for a little over 14 years, and also as a, a C Sharp .NET developer for 17 years. Uh, Tableau Editor is my invention. Uh, I started it around 2016 as a, as a hobby project. Um, and I was also involved uh, a couple of years ago in something called the Power BI Contributor Program. Uh, so if you've noticed inside of Power BI Desktop, there's this little uh, external tools uh, ribbon, uh, at least once you install some uh, external tools like uh, DAX Studio, AL ALM Toolkit and Tableau Editor. And actually, this particular feature, the, the external tools uh, ribbon, was actually uh, my creation uh, when I was involved in, in the Power BI Contributor Program. So I'm really happy to, to have had the opportunity to, to also contribute uh, to, to Power BI Desktop uh, and to the Power BI um, world uh, in general. So <clears throat> what is Tableau Editor? Well, uh, the, the ultra short uh, version is that it's an uh, offline data model editor. It was originally created uh, for a SQL Server analysis services, uh, which uses the same tabular data modeling engine that, that is also inside of Power BI Desktop. Um, and so it, it, it initially the, the target was just SQL Server uh, analysis services and Azure analysis services. Uh, but recently, so that's uh, around 2020 when the external tools uh, feature was announced in, uh, in, in, in Power BI Desktop. Uh, we also now have support for uh, Power BI Premium and Power BI Embedded uh, since this allows Tableau Editor to connect uh, through the so-called XMLA endpoint. And then, of course, also uh, you can use the tool uh, as an external tool for for Power BI Desktop, which I'm also going to show you here in the in the demo. Uh, Tableau Editor is available in two different versions. Uh, we have Tableau Editor 2, uh, which is uh, the free and open source version, which is what I'm going to focus on in uh, in this demo. Uh, but if you uh, if you like Tableau Editor 2, and and if you feel like you want more and you want a more premium experience, then you should consider looking at the uh, Tableau Editor 3, uh, which does have a commercial license, uh, but we do offer a, a 30 day free trial so that you can you can try it out and see if uh, if if it's something that that you like. Uh, and our website is at uh, tableditor.com, so that should be straightforward to uh, to to find. Uh, so uh, why should we use Tableau Editor? Well, I already mentioned some of it uh, in regards to uh, to working on a, on a, a large and complex model with many tables and many meshes and so on. Uh, the standard tools, uh, meaning Power BI Desktop and also Visual Studio, for those of you who are building uh, Tableau models on analysis services, they do have some shortcomings in terms of speed and productivity uh, when we're working with large models. And, and one of these uh, issues is that every time you make a change to your model, like if you change the DAX expression of a mesh or if you change a format string or a description or something like that, then the, the, the standard tool 
will have to update the analysis services database that runs behind the scene. And this update process can take a while to complete, especially uh, when the model starts to grow in, in size and complexity. So for small models, it's normally not a problem. Uh, it's not a big problem. It, it only takes maybe less than a second uh, for a DAX expression change to, to come through. But if you're working with a, with a really complex model with maybe hundreds of tables and thousands of measures, this update can take maybe 20, 30 seconds uh, to complete. And that's just a long time to have to wait every time you make a small change to the model. Now, Tableau Editor works in a different way in that it only considers the model metadata, so the model structure. And that means that every time you make a change in Tableau Editor, it is instantly uh, happening. It's lightning fast. Uh, you don't have to wait for, for any database to be updated or anything like that. Uh, so the update of the database only happens when you press the Save button. So this way you are in control of, uh, of, of when you want the, the update of the database to happen. And at least from my point of view as, as a developer, this just gives you a much more natural and and, uh, and much more a streamlined uh, developer experience uh, because as a developer, when you're writing DAX code and so on, you, you want to be able to switch quickly back and forth between different measures and see what's going on and make some small change there and another small change here. Um, and so you, you don't want to have to wait uh, for the little working on it spinner to, to complete between uh, each of these changes. Um, so, so that's I would say that that is the primary advantage of uh, of using Tableau Editor. Then, of course, there's there's a lot of other interesting uh, stuff going on. So, Tableau Editor, for example, exposes uh, the entire Tableau object model, uh, including uh, advanced stuff like calculation groups and perspectives, uh, and other types of, of of things which are not something that you can edit uh, through Power BI Desktop. Um, so, so in a sense, it it unlocks some advanced modeling features which already exist in the analysis services engine, uh, but which Power BI Desktop just does not expose to us uh, in any way that we can uh, that we can work with it. Um, it also has a nice, and this is more relevant for, uh, for for those of you who are used to working with Visual Studio for for development. It has this: uh, what you see is what you get. Uh, WYSIWYG interface for display folders and translations and perspectives. So it's easy if you're building models that are localized in multiple uh, languages. Then it's easy to to see how the model and the the metadata translations would appear to an end user. So you can just uh, there's a drop down, so you can switch between the different uh, languages and 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 see how the model would look like. Um, so, yeah, so, so th that's a pretty nice feature as well. And then, yeah, uh, work offline, uh, control workspace database sync. That's what I already mentioned about. about you, you press the save button and only then will the workspace database get uh, get updated. Um, in addition to all of that, we have some uh, some other productivity enhancing features, uh, which is uh, the, the scripting functionality of Tableau Editor. Um, so even if you have a tool like Tableau Editor, which is very fast in making small changes, uh, many times when you're building uh, complex models, uh, you are actually repeating very, very similar operations over and over again. One example is, for example, when you have to create uh, time intelligence uh, measures, uh, then you typically just have to reuse the same uh, DAX formula for, for creating time intelligence in many different places. Uh, and this is something that is, can be quite uh, tedious and repetitive to just into the same formula over and over again and in slightly different uh, uh, flavors. Um, and this is then something that you can use the scripting feature of Tableau Editor to, uh, to automate. And I will share you a demo of that uh, as well. Uh, Tableau Editor also has uh, a best practice analyzer uh, built in, uh, which means that you can define your own set of uh, rules uh, for, uh, for for looking at, at the model metadata to make sure that you adhere, for example, to certain uh, naming conventions uh, or always remembering to to uh, to add uh, descriptions to uh, to measures and columns and so on. Uh, so you can have all of these rules uh, that will uh, and, and tablet editor will then uh, continually continuously scan the model uh, in the background uh, to see if you have any any rule uh, violations. And I'll, I'll show you that in the, in the demo as well. And then last but not least, uh, Tableau Editor has this uh, save to folder uh, functionality, which uh, which enables us to uh, to split up uh, the model metadata into several small files, uh, which is useful if you want to uh, to put your, your data model into some kind of version control uh, environment, or if you have the need for multiple developers to be able to, uh, to work in parallel on the same data model. That's where the, the save to folder uh, feature comes in. So um, 
is there, is there a catch? Uh, well, I would say yes, uh, th there is something to be aware about before you start using the tool, uh, especially uh, for Tableau Editor 2, I would say it is not well suited uh, for, for people who are new to Tableau modeling. So if you do not uh, know much about uh, measures and calculated columns and, and DAX code and so on, then I would say uh, you should spend some more time uh, learning these concepts uh, using Power BI Desktop or, 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 the, or the standard tools from Microsoft. And then at some point, um, once you've familiarized yourself with all of these uh, concepts, uh, then you should consider at some point switching over to tablets uh, uh, to, to then truly being able to appreciate uh, the, the difference the tool makes. Uh, tablet Editor 3 is a little better uh, in this regard than, than Tablet Editor 2 since it has some, some additional features like a diagram view and you can view the, the contents of, uh, of your tables. And it also has this DAX intelligence that, that helps you uh, write uh, DAX code. Uh, but I would say it, it is still an advanced tool. So if you're, if you're completely new to, uh, to, to creating Tableau models, then I would say you should uh, stick to, to Power BI Desktop at least for a couple of months until you understand uh, these concepts and know what what the difference is between a calculated column and a measure and so on. Uh, and then at that point, you, you can consider using Tableau Editor uh, to, uh, to, to improve your productivity. Um, all right, so this slide just sums up some of the, the basic features uh, that are available in, in both versions of the tool. Uh, you see we have stuff like uh, being able to uh, to drag and drop and multi-select objects, uh, copy and paste, and even undo and redo. So, uh, so so if you make a mistake or if you want to go back to to what the model was like at a previous stage, you just have the undo and redo buttons as, as, uh, as we do. I, I don't think neither Visual Studio uh, nor Power BI Desktop allows us to undo data modeling uh, changes. Um, we have the DAX formatter. Uh, uh, integrated in the tool so you can easily format your DAX code to make it look nice. Uh, we have a, a go to definition uh, feature that allows you to quickly navigate back and forth between uh, between meshes and, and, and to see the, the, the documentation for DAX functions. Uh, and we have a dependency view uh, which shows us how, uh, how DAX expressions uh, are related to one another. So if you have one measure which relies on a, another measure and that measure in turn relies on a third measure, then uh, Tableau Editor can view, can view you this dependency tree uh, between all of these measures. Um, yeah, so um, with that uh, out of the way, I think we will just uh, jump into the, the demo so, uh, so we can see how it, uh, how it works. Um, before we get started though, uh, are there any questions at, at this point? Just feel free to unmute or, or write in the chat. There is no question in the chat, boys, but guys, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself and then ask your question. Yeah. Okay, okay if, if not, we'll just go on with the demo, but again, please okay. feel free to interrupt anytime if, uh, if you have a question. Okay, okay so here, let me, uh, let me open uh, just a simple uh, Power BI model uh, that I have. This is just a sample uh, model created by Microsoft. So the idea is that uh, that, that uh, if, if you want to use uh, Tableau Editor as an external tool for uh, for Power BI Desktop, you simply install Tableau Editor, and then at that point it will uh, show up in 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 this external tools uh, ribbon. So you can see I also have DAX Studio, and then I have both Tableau Editor 2 uh, and Tableau Editor 3 installed. So for this demo, we are just going to use Tableau Editor 2. Um, and so the idea here is that you 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 will still open your PBIX file in, uh, in Power BI Desktop. Uh, since the PBIX file format is uh, proprietary from Microsoft, then there's no way to, to open the PBIX file directly in Tableau Editor. So you'll still have to open the PBIX file in Desktop, and then once, once the file is open, then you can, can launch uh, Tableau Editor directly from the, from the ribbon here. Now you see I'm getting this warning. This is because I, I actually, uh, in an earlier demo, I enabled a feature here called uh, allow unsupported Power BI features. Now by default, this is always uh, disabled and this is also the, the recommendation uh, to leave this uh, unchecked, uh, which is the default. So let me just start it over because then you can see I now no longer get this uh, this warning message. Now, just to explain what this uh, what this little checkbox does here, it, it, it's pretty important. Uh, so 
um, when you're using Tableau Editor as an external tool for uh, for Power BI Desktop, there are some limitations in terms of which data model changes you are allowed uh, to make. At least from uh, from Microsoft's point of view, uh, it is possible to make changes to to a data model in Power BI Desktop which are not supported, meaning that you you actually risk uh, breaking the PBIX file uh, if if you make certain changes. So one example is that uh, in a Tableau model, every table uh, has something called partitions, uh, and a table can have more than one partition. Uh, however, uh, Power BI Desktop does not support this. So in Power BI Desktop, each table needs to only have a single partition. Um, so when when this feature is uh, so when you leave this feature unchecked, um, which is the default, then Tableau Editor will will not let you uh, let you add additional partitions uh, to a model. However, if I go ahead and, and I enable this feature, then I can suddenly uh, create new partitions uh, in each table. Uh, but if I if I do this against this model, then I risk uh, breaking the PBIX file, corrupting the file so that it can no longer be used. So you are free to experiment with this feature, of course. Uh, just remember to, to keep a backup of your uh, PBIX file uh, in case uh, something breaks. Uh, and otherwise, just, just leave it at, at the default unchecked uh, status uh, to make sure that, that we are not uh, actually breaking anything. Uh, you can read more about this limitation if you search for Power BI external tools. There is an article here. I'll put the link in the in the chat as well. Uh, where uh, we see what, what the specific limitations are uh, when we are using uh, external tools to edit our, uh, our Power BI model. All right, um, so uh, before I move on with this demo, I just noticed that, that this, uh, this model has uh, a couple of hidden uh, date tables, as you can see here. It has these local date, ta uh, date table, which contains this GUID. And this is because um, this uh, particular uh, report uses uh, automatic time intelligence. And I want to get rid of that because that, that, that doesn't really work uh, good uh, together with, uh, with, with Tableau Editor or, or any other third party tool. So here I will just get rid of this auto date time feature in, in Power BI Desktop. And that's a, a general recommendation to never uh, use this, uh, this feature and always uh, supply your own calendar table instead. So now I removed this and now we should see in Tableau Editor that, that we no longer have the hidden date table. So now we only have the, the, the five tables uh, which are also uh, shown in, in Power BI Desktop. Um, so the way uh, uh, Tableau Editor interacts with the with with, with the uh, with the report is uh, you can uh, you can browse uh, the model you can make changes. So let's say for example that I want to make a copy of of these four meshes. I can simply just select and then choose the the duplicate four meshes option, and then I get a copy uh, of these four meshes. Um, and as you can see, all of these changes are lightning fast. So let's say I, I move these into a new display folder called test and then I can also do stuff like you know drag and drop objects into this display folder and you can see these changes just happen instantly uh, we can even add a description here like hello or we can we can select multiple objects in order to add the same description to multiple objects at once and all of these changes are lightning fast they happen instantly and as I said I can even undo uh, these changes if uh, if I make a mistake along the way um, but you'll see that the field list in Power BI hasn't changed. So this only happens when I hit the save button in uh, in, in, in Tableau Editor. So that's when uh, it goes and, and updates the, the 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 analysis services database, uh, which is hosted by by Power BI Desktop. So when I hit this this button, we should now see that the the, the field list uh, changes. So sometimes it, it doesn't work, um, especially for large mods, it, it doesn't always update. So if you ever e experience that, uh, one uh, easy solution is to just have a, a, a dummy, uh, like a, a calculated table, and you don't need to, to put anything in it, just a, a single value. And then if you, and we can just rename this, we call it a dummy table and we will also hide it so it's not visible for uh, for end users and then the, the the point is that that if you see that that the 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 the, the new meshes that you've created through tablet that do not appear in in your model uh, then you can just uh, refresh uh, this um, uh, th this particular table um, to 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 have this um, uh, to to have the field list update so sorry i, I don't think for a 
calculated table it doesn't work but if i if i add uh, if i add uh, so let me just enter some some data here in in an import table so just put a zero it doesn't really matter and we name this dummy table and we load So here we go. So I can hide this table, and now I have uh, now I have an option to to just refresh this table whenever I uh, I, I see that that the um, that that the thing uh, the changes I made in tabulated that didn't get synchronized automatically. So we can see now here uh, in the test folder is all of the meshes that I created uh, before. So just to see that it works, let's uh, go ahead and rename this into something else. Let's call it uh, Persian Power BI User Group and we hit save and as, as you see for some reason in this model it doesn't update automatically but then i can just as i said i can go to the dummy table i created i can refresh this table and now we see that that we see the the updated uh, table name so sometimes for some reason uh, power bi desktop gets out of sync uh, with, with the external tool and then you can use this little trick uh, as a workaround Right. Um, so let's uh, let let's see some of the other features that I I talked about. So, for example, if I wanted to know how the meshes in this model are related to one another and if there are any dependencies, I can go to a measure like uh, total sales, and then I can right click on this measure and choose the show dependencies option. And then Tablet uh, shows all of the the uh, it can actually show the dependency in both directions. So here we can see that total sales is also being used by total sales LY, and it's also being used by total sales TY. And total sales TY is in turn being used by this year's sales and total sales VAR, which in turn is being used by total sales VAR percentage, which is in turn is being used by total sales variance percentage. And so we, we can see the entire dependency tree uh, in both directions, in fact. So we can also go go in, in the other direction. So starting from total sales variance, uh, we can see it, we don't have any, any other measures that depend on total sales variance, but we can see which measures it depends on. Uh, all the way down to, to the to the column and the table from which the, the DAX formula originates. Um, so this is quite useful if you inherit a model and, you, and you're trying to understand how uh, how the meshes are related to one another uh, within that model. Uh, I also mentioned uh, that uh, you can navigate uh, between objects in, in, in the DAX editor. So here, for example, if, if you choose a specific mesh and you can see it's, uh, it's DAX expression here, if you uh, put the, the mouse cursor over uh, a mesh reference and you hit uh, F12 or you can hit the little button up here, uh, you can see it has this F12 uh, shortcut, then we actually jump over to that particular mesh. So this is another way you can, you can navigate through the model uh, just by hovering over a mesh and then clicking on, on F12 and then it'll it'll jump over to that uh, to that measure and then we have the little arrow button buttons here that let let you navigate back and forth um, so you can think of them like just like if you're in a web browser and you're navigating back and forth between web pages uh, they they work the same way if you uh, put the cursor over a DAX function like calculate and you then hit F12, then it'll actually open a web browser uh, that goes to uh, to the DAX guide, the DAX guide website, which has a cr comprehensive documentation for all of the for all of the DAX uh, functions. Uh, this website was created by the SQL BI team, uh, Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari, who you've probably already heard about. Um, and uh, this is the, the best documentation you'll find for for all of the various uh, DAX functions. So it's nice to have that little feature. Uh, you just hit one button and then you can bring up the, the documentation for, uh, for for these items. Uh, lastly, I mentioned that uh, we have the DAX formatter uh, integrated. So you see there's this little format DAX uh, button here, um, which uh, which we can use to, to get our code uh, nicely formatted. Now let me see if I can find a, a slightly more complex DAX expression like this one. Um, so we, if we just hit the format DAX button, uh, we get this uh, nicely formatted according to the the, the, the standard uh, way that, that the DAX formatter web service is, uh, is formatting DAX code. So see, we have one question here. Is it possible to find relationship between measure and tables in this category? Uh, well, yes, it, it actually is. Uh, since uh, let's say you, uh, you you want to know if you have any measures that use the item table. Uh, so you just click on the item table and then you press on, uh, on show dependencies. 
and then you can uh, you have since you now started on a on a table you actually have three options now so you can also show relationships so in this case you can see that you have uh, one table which is, is sales which is related to the to the item table through a, a one to n a relationship so basically item is a dimension table for uh, for sales but of course you can also view if you have any any uh, objects so measures for example that depend on item now in this case i don't let's take another one let's take this one the time table uh, and click here oh, interestingly there's also no objects uh, that depend on this. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I, I thought there was, didn't we have some time intelligence? Uh, oh, I see. Um, yeah, so in this particular model, it doesn't look like we have any uh, any code actually that that uses the the time or the or the product uh, tables. Uh, but let's say I go into uh, to sales, for example, I click on the sales table and then I show the dependencies and then I can see all of these measures that directly re uh, relate, uh, directly reference the sales table. So for example, total sales last year, we can see here is a reference to the sales table or gross mar margin this year, here's another reference to the sales table. So, so this is one way to do it. Or uh, if you're looking for a particular column, for example, scenario ID, which is a column, then we can do the same thing. We can see if we have any measures that reference this particular, uh, particular column. So hopefully that answers your uh, your question. Um, but that is the, the the purpose of the dependency view to 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 enable us to to detect uh, dependencies between these objects. Right. Uh, so let me uh, go into another uh, demo uh, here. So uh, this is just to show you some of the the productivity features that I mentioned earlier with uh, with scripting in in Tableau Editor. So if I if I now uh, start by creating a, a, a new model uh, from scratch, uh, just to show you how how much faster uh, Tableau Editor can uh, can make some of of, of your work here. Uh, so in this case, let me just get some some data, um, and I will use Power BI Desktop uh, for importing data since. Uh, adding uh, tables to the model is uh, not something we can do through uh, Tableau Editor, at least not for uh, for Power BI Desktop. You can see the, 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 the external tools integration is limited uh, to things like adding uh, and editing measures, calculation groups, perspectives, metadata translations, and then row level and object level security uh, for restricting data access. So anything that is not mentioned in this uh, in this uh, list here is not uh, among the things that are supported. So even though Tableau Editor could technically still make these changes to a model, then we actually risk breaking the PBX file if we try to do it through Tableau Editor. So if you want to enable the, the, the full spectrum of all of the, the data modeling features that, uh, that Tableau Editor enables, uh, then you will have to rely on uh, on the Power BI Premium XMLA endpoint. So as soon as you connect Tableau Editor to the XMLA endpoint of Power BI Premium, then you don't have any of these uh, limitations. Uh, and the same applies if you are connecting to an Azure Analysis Services or SQL Server Analysis uh, Services model, then uh, these limitations do not exist. These limitations are only for Power BI Desktop. So um, for this demo, let me just quickly import some uh, some tables from a local uh, SQL uh, database that I have here. Uh, so we will just go ahead and get um, just a few tables here. Let me get something like a customer, uh, customer and dates and products and fact internet sales and let's also go with uh, let's take one more let's take uh, sales territory no uh, let's take now let's take the product hierarchy here so we just load these tables this is just regular power bi stuff um have to wait uh, a couple of seconds for for the load here to complete um so adding tables to the model, defining relationships between the tables, those are all things that you will still have to do through uh, through Power BI Desktop, uh, unless you're using Power BI Premium, as I mentioned. Um, but uh, but but fine tuning of the model, like adding meshes and uh, arranging meshes and display folders and adding calculations uh, in general, is something that you can do through uh, through Tableau Editor. So here, let me just uh, clean this up a little bit. I want to just rename this table. I want to call it sales. 
Um, and I would also like to rename these other five tables. Uh, I'll have to do that one at a time. In, in the meantime, let me just show you some of the benefits of, uh, of being able to use uh, tablets, so for example, against the, the XMLA endpoint. So here I'm, uh, I'll connect uh, tablets to a, um, uh, no, actually, let me just create a uh, new model here. And just to show you, if, if I was working against Power BI Premium or um, uh, or uh, analysis services, I could actually do the same thing here. I can import some tables. Um, so let me just import once again the same tables from my uh, my local database. So here we use uh, customer and date and the product tables and also fact internet sales. So we import these five. And now just to, to show you here uh, some of the, the benefits of being able to, to use tabulated to this is I can rename multiple objects at once. So if I multi-select these five objects and I, I, I hit F2, I have this batch uh, rename option. So I can just get rid of the, the dim. So I replace dim with the nothing. And then I get these nice uh, names for the objects. And, and as you can see, this is just much faster than, uh, than in uh, in, in, in Power BI Desktop since it happens offline without synchronizing any any database. So that, that was just to show the difference here. In this model, I would have to, in, in, in Power BI Desktop, I would have to uh, to go through them uh, one by one. And every time I change something, I have to wait for the for the little uh, working on it spinner to, um, to, to complete. Now for this model, it's not too bad. It's just six tables, so it only takes um, a, a few seconds to complete, but still it's a little annoying that we don't have, uh, for example, the option of, of, of uh, renaming uh, objects in uh, in batch uh, like I did with, uh, with, with Tableau Editor. Uh, all right, let me just get this one going and why? Right. So now the next step in this model, uh, be, uh, we are ready to uh, to add some measures uh, to the model. Now, uh, many users, uh, in, in many cases, when people create uh, reports in, in Power BI Desktop, uh, they, they don't care about uh, creating measures uh, since, uh, you know, you, you can just uh, take, for example, the sales amount column and you can drag it in and then you can slice it by, uh, by product color. Uh, and it just works. Uh, so many people think, hey, what, why should I bother uh, creating a measure? Well, uh, there are actually several reasons for that. Uh, so uh, one reason is that um, when you are using a column here instead of a measure um, in, in your visuals, um, then, um, for example, you can't be sure that, that you're using the right type of aggregation. So Power BI Desktop defaults to the sum aggregation, but in some cases you may want to have a distinct count or a maximum or an average. And so that is one reason for always creating measures because that way you can control at the data model level how the, the numbers will be aggregated uh, instead of uh, relying on, 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 on the, the person who is designing the report uh, to, to choose the, the correct uh, type of aggregation. Um, another reason for this is that if you publish uh, this report to the Power BI service uh, and you want to allow users to analyze uh, the, the model using uh, Excel uh, instead of Power BI, um, then your uh, your Excel users will not be able uh, to, uh, to to view these numbers as uh, Excel uses uh, MDX behind the scenes to uh, to to to, uh, to query the data model. Uh, MDX actually requires the data model to have uh, actual explicit measures. Um, it, 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 in Excel, you won't be able to 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 aggregate a, a column, for example. It it has to be through a measure. So there are a couple of reasons why it, it's a good idea to always create the the explicit measures. Now, of course, um, I, I could easily easily do that here in um, um, in in Power BI Desktop. I I could click a new measure, and then I could uh, write sum of sales amount, and then I could put in here the, the DAX expression like sales amount. Uh, so that's all good. I, I can easily do that. Um, but uh, again, as I said earlier, if you're working on a complex model, this operation can can take some time to, uh, to complete. Uh, and also, uh, if let's say you have 10 numeric columns and you just need to, to create a, a measure like this, which is just a simple uh, uh, summation uh, of the numeric column, then it's kind of tedious and repetitive to have to, uh, to do that over and over. So there's a better way. So let's uh, let's remove this uh, this measure uh, from uh, from the model again, and let's get rid of this. And let's then bring up a Tableau Editor connected to uh, to this model. So here we now have uh, the model. We can see all of the columns that have been uh, been added uh, to the model. We can also see their uh, their data types here somewhere. 
so yeah, so here's the da data type. We can see some of them are, are numeric, uh, decimal data types. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to be able to, to, uh, to create these measures. Again, we can easily create the measures in Tableau data set one by one. So doing the same thing, sum of sales amount, creating it here. We can start to write sum, and then we can drag the sales amount column over here to get a, a reference to this. Uh, and we hit save, and, and then the measure appears over in uh, in Power BI Desktop, just like uh, like before. But I, I'm actually looking for an for an even faster way of uh, of, of of doing this, um, and that is actually possible. So let me let me just undo uh, the creation of of this measure. So now we are we are back to uh, to before the measure existed in uh, in, in Power BI. Uh, now this time I want to use the script uh, to uh, to create the measures um, and the script I'm using. So instead of uh, trying to to figure out the the code for that, I'll just go to the docs.tablets.com website, and then under te2 docs, you'll find an article here called uh, useful script snippets. So let me paste the link for this in the chat as well. And sure enough, actually the first uh, sample code that is available here on this site deals with uh, creating meshes uh, from columns. So I will copy this code. I'll move it into uh, into Tableau Editor. And then uh, just to go over it uh, quickly to see what's happening here, let me enlarge uh, the text a little bit. So the idea is that we now have a script um, which is going to, uh, to loop uh, over every column that is currently selected uh, in the Tom Explorer. And then for each uh, such column, it's going to uh, to locate the table that the column resides on, and then it's going to add a measure uh, to that table. And the name of that measure is going to be sum of uh, plus the name of the column. And the expression of the measure is going to be the DAX function sum, and then a starting parenthesis, and then a reference uh, to the to the column, uh, and then an, an, a closing parenthesis. And then lastly, uh, if the column has a display folder, we are going to assign the same display folder to the measure. Then next up, we will assign the format string of the measure. We will add a description for the measure. And then finally, we will hide uh, the, the column uh, that we uh, uh, that, that we are basing the measure on, because once we have the measure, there's no reason to, uh, to expose the, the column uh, in our uh, data model anymore. So let me just uh, select uh, a couple of, uh, of columns here. So I'm just going to select all of the uh, uh, columns that have a numeric data type here. Um, so this is for seven columns in total. And then I'm going to click the, the run script button. I could also hit F5 and then, oops. Uh, yeah, so so w w when you select some code in, in the advanced scripting editor, it's trying to just select that particular piece of code. So if you want to execute the entire script, you should either select everything or just uh, leave the cursor uh, without any selection. So let's do that. And now we see instantly we get these seven uh, new meshes uh, added to the model, and you can see each of them have the corresponding uh, DAX expression. We have the the format, uh, we have the description and the format string assigned, um, and the columns that the meshes were based on have been uh, have been hidden, uh, so they no longer appear to the end user. So let me just bring uh, Power BI Desktop up here in the background. So we can see what happens when we click on the save button in Power BI Desktop. So now we hit save. And just like that, some of the columns in the field list have now disappeared and we now get the meshes uh, instead. So this is of course the, the, the first step, uh, uh, having uh, creating the, all of these meshes from the columns. Then a typical next step would be that, uh, that, that you want to add multiple flavors of these meshes uh, for time intelligence purposes. For example, you may have a year to date uh, mesh, uh, month to date and so on and so forth. And of course there's a script uh, for that as well. Um, so um, let me just quickly show this uh, this demo here, and then I'll answer the, the, the question afterwards. It's a good question. Um, so here I'm just going to paste in this uh, this script. This is a slightly longer script. Let's zoom out a little bit. The the principle here is the same. Uh, this time uh, we just have a loop over uh, every selected measure. Um, in, uh, in Tableau Editor. And then for each of these meshes, we're going to add a year-to-date version, a previous year, year over year, and a couple of other uh, variations. Um, that's just one thing we need to, to um, take note of, that in this uh, script, we need to uh, provide the reference 
to the to the date column uh, of the model. Uh, and actually, there's uh, there's a, 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 there's some other ways we can do this. We we could also write uh, there's a function in Tableau so called uh, select column, um, and I think we can use it something like model dot all columns, where uh, and then do something like we only want to consider columns that has the uh, the date time data type something like this uh, DAX object. I'm not sure if this works. Yeah, it actually did. So what I did basically, instead of hard coding the name of the, the column and the script, I used the, the select uh, column uh, function uh, to show up a, a dialog for the end user to choose which column to use as their date column. Uh, so let, when I'm running the script, I now get this select column view. And so the idea here is that I can I can choose a column uh, from the model. In this case, I know that on my date table, I have the I have the full date alternate key, which is uh, the, the date column I actually want to use. Let me just uh, rename that column. So I'll just go over to Power BI Desktop and I'll just rename uh, this column to, uh, to date. Uh, here we go. And uh, Tableau Editor, as you can see, has automatically picked up the, the change that I made in, uh, in Power BI Desktop. Um, so now let's run the script again and choose the date column and then we hit uh, oh sorry to select uh, i need to select the meshes that we want to create time intelligence flavors for so now i've selected these seven meshes i click play choose the date column and just like that we now get some uh, let's see how many meshes do we have now we have 49 meshes in total uh, in the model now uh, so each of these meshes is just uh, some variation uh, of, of the original mesh with, with various uh, time intelligence uh, code uh, built in. So this, uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a much faster way uh, to, to add this um, uh, add this kind of uh, repetitive uh, code uh, to, to the model. In fact, let's uh, refine this a little bit further. Uh, let me undo the script. Uh, so as you can see now, uh, I removed all of the meshes that I just created through the, the script just by using the undo feature because I want to add a display folder uh, to, to these meshes. So in this case, uh, let me add a new variable here called time intelligence. And then let's replace all occurrences of M display folder with just display folder. So we can do, use find and replace in our script window uh, doing something like this. And now let's run the script one more time. Choose the date table. And now, sure enough, we get all of these uh, time intelligence meshes put into this time intelligence folder. So let's save the change. And now over in, uh, in Power BI Desktop, see once again, we've hit this issue. Oh, wait a second, I think it should be here. Yeah, so here we now have the time intelligence folder and you can see within the time intelligence folder, we now have all of these meshes. Okay, so uh, Fernando has two questions. I'll start with the last one. How does this process differ from the calculation group approach to build time intelligence measures? Uh, that's a, a really good question, um, Fernando. And uh, in most cases, I would also recommend using calculation groups for creating uh, time intelligence measures. Uh, but this was mostly just a demonstration of how you can use the scripting capability to, uh, to generate many measures uh, in a short amount of time. Uh, there is one exception where sometimes it's also nice to have the individual meshes. And that is because, uh, as you know, the calculation group will, will sort of become a dimension in the model where you can choose, for example, month to date, previous year, quarter to date. Now, uh, the problem with that is, let's say you want a more complex uh, view. For example, let's say you want a, a, a list where you're slicing uh, by product color. And then you want to bring in uh, different measures with different uh, time intelligence. So let's say that you want the freight month to date and the freight year over year. And at the same time, you want the tax amount previous year and tax amount year to date. So now I have a combination of different measures with different uh, time intelligence. And this is not possible with the calculation group. Uh, if, if you had used the calcula calculation group here, uh, you would have to, to uh, you would get all of the combinations of the calculation items that you filter with the meshes uh, that you include. Uh, so here, uh, so, so this is one advantage of actually having these as, uh, as separate meshes um, in the model. And you could also have both uh, options uh, available at the same time so that you use both the calculation group and this uh, functionality. Uh, so this is just a matter of how you prefer uh, to design your model and, and which 
uh, specific uh, report uh, requirements that that you have. So for your other question, uh, can you create a mesh? Uh, can, can you create mesh uh, a meshes table from uh, from Tableau Editor? So by meshes table, I assume you mean a table where you are collecting all of your meshes. Um, unfortunately, since uh, creating tables uh, against the Power BI Desktop model is uh, is not one of the supported um, data modeling operations. Uh, then, uh, the, then I mean, the answer is yes. You you are, you can of course create a table in Tableau Editor, but for Power BI Desktop, it's it it would be unsupported uh, by doing it. So in this case, I would recommend uh, creating the 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 table in uh, in Power BI Desktop. So we can just do that. We can uh, create a new table called my meshes, and we'll just put the expression e. Uh, just to a, to a single value. So now we have the my meshes table, and then the good news is that that we can use Tabular Editor uh, to move uh, all of the meshes uh, to that table. Uh, so in Tabular Editor, we can just do a uh, a cut and and paste uh, in order to to bring the meshes into the my meshes uh, table instead. Uh, so we hit save, and and now we we see all of the meshes on the my meshes table instead. Um, now. One thing to be aware of: if you are moving meshes between tables uh, through external tools, you may risk uh, that your um, that your visuals will will break, as you can see here, and that's because, unfortunately, visuals in Power BI uh, reference the fully qualified mesh name, that is, the mesh name including the table name in the front. Uh, so, if you do this, uh, yeah, if you have this requirement, it may be better to move the the, the meshes using uh, using Power BI Desktop because then Power BI Desktop will automatically update any visuals uh, that uh, that reference uh, that measure. So that, that is actually an important limitation to be aware about for, for any uh, external tool in Power BI Desktop is that the external tool does not have access to the to the visuals that you are that you're creating in your report. It only knows about the, the data model. Uh, and so we, we cannot see if a measure is being used by a particular visual uh, inside the, the report. Um, so that's in in general why you should be very careful uh, about making uh, making data model changes after uh, uh, after you've created your reports and, and your visuals. Um, all right. Um, so uh, if there are no more questions for uh, for this part, the scripting, I'll I'll just uh, quickly show some of the other uh, possibilities that you can use uh, scripting for. Uh, so let's go back to the article uh, here. So as you can see, we, we saw how we can create meshes from columns. We can uh, generate time intelligence meshes. There are many other things you can use this uh, this feature for. Um, for example, there's, uh, there's a feature called uh, export properties, uh, which lets you uh, uh, export um, a list uh, of, uh, of of meshes, for example, and, and their properties like their name, description and expression and so on. Uh, into a format that you can actually you, uh, open in uh, in Excel. Uh, so for this model, for example, I could write something like, uh, if if I just copy the code here, um, and let's just say okay, C drive. So here, for example, if I select all of the time intelligence measures and I run this script, then I should now have a a file on my my C drive in my temp uh, folder called export properties and here it is and this file uh, is a is a, a tab, uh, tabular separated uh, values I, if i rename it to csv i should be able to open it in uh, in excel uh, and in excel for example i can use this um, uh, text to column feature um, to to split it into separate columns and then just like that i have a nice way of of documenting my uh, my model uh, viewing for in this case all of the measures in the model seeing their expression and the format string and so on and um, and you can actually go in in the other direction as well so so you can uh, if you provide a description here like hello welcome to this demo uh, so this now i i actually provide a description for five different measures and then you just uh, take all of this and you uh, copy it into um, uh, the same format. So here I have this uh, tabular separated uh, file format, uh, and I save this. So let's save it back to the to the same location uh, as before. Um, so let's call this export properties uh, two dot TSV. Uh, 
and we save this file. Then if I go back to tablet editor, there's, uh, there's an equivalent uh, import uh, properties function. And I think that should also be described here in um, uh, here in the documentation. Uh, let's see, import. There it is. Uh, so we can use this, this code, put it here, and we just need to update path here to point to the right file. So now if I if I run this code, I will load the file uh, and load the properties that are specified in the file. So now we should, should see that, yeah, sure enough, uh, the, the description for this measure has now been assigned. You can see it says hello. Uh, and so we have all of the, the descriptions that we specified in the file. So this is a useful feature if, if you want to, uh, if you have a long list of measures, for example, and you want someone else to provide uh, descriptions, uh, or format strings or something like that, um, and you don't want uh, that person to have access to the model itself, um, then you can just hand them this uh, TSV file. They can open it in Excel, they can make the changes that they like, and then they can send the file back to you and you can easily import it into the model, uh, just like I did here. And there's a lot of other interesting stuff uh, you can use uh, scripting for. Uh, you can actually also uh, uh, query um, uh, query the, the 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 tables in the model. There are various methods you can use for that. Uh, I believe uh, Darren Gospel has an example where he is reading some metadata from a, from a table uh, in the model and then creating meshes uh, within the model itself based on the data that he he's reading from uh, from the table. Uh, and this is uh, some of the 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 code he's uh, he's using to do that. Uh, that's also another script you can use if you want to export data from your model into a into a CSV file, for example. So lots of examples here. So so go ahead and uh, and and take a look if if any of these uh, could be interesting to you. So I see there's someone writing in the chat. Uh, okay, that's something to do with Amazon gift cards. That's not a question for the for for me, I guess. Uh, so we'll move on a little bit. Um, I also mentioned uh, Tablet has this uh, so-called best practice uh, analyzer. And uh, to get you started, if you Google uh, Power BI best practice uh, practices, uh, you'll come across uh, an article created by um, uh, Michael Kowalski, uh, who's a senior program manager at, uh, at Microsoft. I'll put the link here in the chat as well. Um, and Michael here has created a, a, a large collection of uh, best practice rules that, that work with uh, with Tableau Editor. So he goes over the rules in, uh, in, in details here uh, and how to load the rules into, into Tableau Editor. Um, but I can also show you how, uh, how the rules themselves look. So the rules are available on this GitHub uh, repository that, uh, that Michael created. And you can see there's a JSON file here called bparules.json. You can uh, bring up the raw file uh, so we can see the, the content. And then if, if I just copy the, the URL um, and go back to Tableau Editor, I can go into my uh, my uh, my best practice analyzer either to see. So right now you see I only have a single rule called uh, called test. So that's not very interesting. But I want to manage uh, the the PPA rules that I'm using. You can see right now the, I actually have two rules available, and I think these rules are 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 rules that are. Um, are specific to me. Uh, so every time I open a, a model on this machine, uh, these two rules will, will apply. So I'll just get rid of these two. Those are just some tests. And then instead, I'm going to add uh, Michael's uh, rule file, and I can do that through a, a URL. So I click here, I enter the, the URL, and then we get all of the, the various best practice rules uh, that, that Michael Kowalski created. We get them loaded into Tablet. So, so now when I hit OK, we see that now we, we suddenly have a whopping uh, 312 uh, best practice uh, rule issues uh, that we should probably uh, fix. Um, and you can see that there are many different types of, uh, of rules here. For example, one rule is that we should avoid using a floating point uh, data type data types. And this is because floating point data types might cause unpredictable um, uh, errors due to uh, rounding errors in, uh, in calculations. So if possible, it's always better to use the, the fixed uh, decimal uh, data types instead of the floating point data types. So in this case, Tablet just points out that I have these uh, three columns. I have the weight column, the unit price discount percentage, and the discount amount uh, column, which are all using the, the floating point uh, data type. And I should should probably consider changing that uh, to avoid any 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 issues uh, in my model. Um, 
Another uh, interesting, uh, some other interesting rules are um, that there's a property called set is available in MDX, uh, which is a more advanced uh, property that, which has something to do with how uh, the analysis services engine, uh, uh, when it's refreshing the model uh, and, and setting this property to, to false, can actually improve uh, refresh performance, especially if you have a, a very large uh, table with, with several million uh, rows uh, and, and you have columns which have many unique values. Uh, because normally for, for a, a numeric column uh, like unit price or sales amount, where you actually want to aggregate the values in the column, then you don't need the, the is available in MDX to be, to be true because you're not going to slice by that column, you're only going to aggregate it. So in that case, you might as well set is available in MDX to, uh, to false. There's also some other things like the model should have a date table. In this case, it means that I, I didn't actually mark uh, the date table as an actually as an actual date table. So I should go into Power BI uh, and I should uh, should mark this table as a date table. Um, this is just to have the, the time intelligence calculations uh, work correctly. And then once I do that, I should see in um, uh, I should see that in um, in in Tableau Edit. So uh, it now uh, appears with the little uh, uh, watch icon here. And now we no longer get this. Uh, uh, we, we no longer get this uh, uh, warning that, that we should mark it as a date table. Uh, another interesting one to be aware about is uh, this one. Do not summarize numeric uh, columns. So this one is uh, also, uh, as I mentioned before, about always having the explicit uh, measures uh, instead of relying on, uh, on, on the report user, uh, choosing the, the correct type of aggregation in, in the report. Um, so for a column like a list price, uh, which which has a numeric data type, this column by default, if you go into uh, into Power BI, uh, this column you can see this has the little uh, sum uh, symbol here, uh, meaning that if if you drag this column into a a visual, uh, Power uh, Power BI will aggregate this column, uh, so it acts as an implicit measure, and that might not be what we want because in, in if, uh, if we did actually want to aggregate uh, the values in this column, we should create an explicit measure, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but if we still want to, to uh, allow the users to see the list price column, then we probably want to, uh, to instruct Power BI Desktop to, uh, to slice by this column instead of aggregating by it. Uh, and the way we do that is by, so in, in Power BI Desktop, we would set the, the summarization to don't summarize, um, but that is the same as going into uh, to Power BI Desktop and and setting uh, the summarize by property to uh, to none uh, instead. So that would be the same thing. Uh, now instead of going over these columns one by one and, and setting this uh, this property manually, uh, Tablet Editor can actually do this for us uh, for some of the rules. Uh, and now for for this particular rule, I can select uh, the, the columns where I want this to to be fixed, and then I can right click and then choose to either generate a fix script or have the, the fix applied directly. Let me just first create a, a script so you can see how that looks. So Tablet so creates a script and puts it into the, the clipboard. And then I can paste the script into the, the advanced scripting view. And then we can see indeed that what this script is going to do is it's going to set the summarize by property on all of these columns uh, to aggregate function none. So I can run the script or I can go back to the best practice analyzer and, and just apply the fix directly and so it fixes all of these columns and now when I hit save in Tableau Editor, you can now see that the, the, the little uh, uh, summarize uh, symbol has, has uh, been removed. So the next time I, I try to add list price to a visual, it's actually going to slice by list price instead of aggregating list price. So that's another uh, really good best practice uh, to have um, to make sure that, that, that that you take care to when, whenever you have a numeric column in your model, you either hide it and create an explicit measure on top of it instead, or you set the summarized by property to uh, to none. There should not really be any other reasons to have uh, numeric uh, columns uh, uh, exposed uh, in a way where where end users can aggregate them uh, in in Power BI Desktop. So yeah, a, l a lot of these rules uh, are like that. Uh, so uh, so take a look and read Michael's article that I put in the uh, in the chat, so you can see what what these rules are about. And then remember that if if, if you need to, you can also create your own rules. Uh, so you can either modify uh, some of the rules that that Michael created, or you can create new rules from from scratch. 
uh, you can find some documentation on, on how this rule editor works on uh, on the website uh, as well. So um, the last thing I think I want to show you for uh, for this session uh, is how to use uh, tablet editors save to folder functionality. If you remember uh, initially I mentioned uh, we have the save to folder feature which allows us to to save the model metadata in a special format which is uh, well suited for uh, version control integration. So for those of you who, who have some experience with, uh, with with version control systems like uh, like Git or Subversion and so on, or TFS, um, you know that that it, it's not really possible uh, to uh, to properly uh, version uh, PBIX files uh, in such an environment. Well, of course, you, you can certainly bring the PBIX file into version control, uh, but since the PBIX file is a, is a binary file format, it's not possible for for your version control system to uh, to to uh, reason about any any changes that have been made uh, or merge uh, conflicting changes uh, from from two different branches of development into a single file. Um, so here, for example, if if we uh, save uh, this uh, as a Persian user group demo, uh, and put it on our desktop. Um, so this PBIX file, as you know, is is this proprietary uh, file format, which is is not uh, well suited for uh, for version control integration. Um, so instead of doing that, uh, we can use a tablet editor to uh, to save the model metadata in a folder structure. Uh, so if you use this save to folder option, uh, let me go and create this demo folder and we choose select folder then let's take a look at what uh, what goes into that folder now so uh, so here's the folder you can see here we have a just a json file a json file is a is a text file which is uh, is, is is easy to integrate in version control and you'll see that we also have um, we have this folder called tables this has one additional subfolder for every table in the model. For example, Internet Sales has an additional subfolder, and our My Measures table has one. This one has the the, the Measures uh, subfolder as well. And here you see that all of our Measures now have their own uh, JSON file within this folder structure. So, for example, uh, if we look at uh, the the text amount, it's just a very very simple JSON document that contains the name and description and expression, format string, and so on of this uh, of this particular measure. Now this file format here is much better suited for uh, for version control integration, uh, since um, if you have two develop two or more developers who are working on this uh, data model at the same time, uh, as long as they are just working on different parts of the model, so maybe I'm working on internet sales and my colleague is working on reseller sales, then we can make these changes. Uh, it'll just affect different files in the file structure. And th that means that our version control environment, if we, we are using Git, for example, it, it can merge uh, the changes uh, that both me and my colleague made uh, in, into the, the, the same folder structure without any issue. Now then, of course, the, the problem then is how can we then uh, get uh, from, from this folder structure, how can we get it back to a data model that we can actually use in Power BI Desktop? Well, uh, one requirement for that is that you, are, that you have access to Power BI Premium, um, because uh, what you can then do is you can open a, a model from a folder structure. So here I'm just opening the, the, the Persian uh, user group demo. I'm selecting this folder and now I'm getting back to my, my data model with all of my meshes and so on. And then we have this option of deploying uh, this uh, data model. So in this case, we could deploy to uh, SQL Server Analysis Services or Azure Analysis Services, or we can deploy to the to the Power BI XMLA endpoint. So we're actually taking the model from this folder structure and deploying it as a data set in the Power BI service. So if you want to use this this functionality with having multiple developers working on the same data model, then you will have to to have access to uh, to the XMLA endpoint either by using uh, Power BI Premium. Uh, capacity of how we are premium per user. So hopefully that that makes sense. Um, right, so I, I got a question here uh, around any plans to list in app source. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that entails, uh, to be honest. Uh, if there's some cost associated with it, we will have to evaluate uh, for, from our side. But please be aware that uh, for the open source version of Tabula Editor, at least, uh, there are actually uh, two different versions you can download. You can download a portable version uh, that you can use even if you don't have admin access uh, on your own machine. So you can just download the zip file 
uh, unzip it to any folder on your machine, and then you can just use the tool. You don't even have to install anything or anything like that uh, to use it. Uh, so that usually solves the the, the problem that, that most people have uh, in terms of using uh, using external tools. Other than that, uh, the, the tool is uh, is actually uh, signed. It has a code certificate. Uh, uh, that is sponsored by by my company capacity and that means that, uh, that 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 if you have any company policies around using software that's downloaded from the internet then the, it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue since the, the code is actually digitally signed uh, so hopefully that answers your your, your question uh, in the chat uh, so let me just go back to the to the slides uh, for a little bit here um so uh, just uh, as as a, a small uh, commercial for uh, for for tablet of 3 uh this uh, has been uh, tablet editor 3 is is basically an, an evolution of of tablet editor 2 so we looked at tablet editor 2 we evaluated which were the the features that that we would really like to to have and then we evaluated the 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 effort and the investment uh, required for, uh, for for these features and one of these and i would say probably the most important of these new features is the ability of having uh, intelligence uh, so we have a much better uh, editor for uh, writing dax code in in tablet so 3 uh, but this has also been a been a huge investment it has taken more than uh, more than 3 years to actually uh, write the code for the for the dax editor and the the dax uh, semantic analyzer that that understands the 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 dax semantics of your code and this is one of the reasons why we decided on uh, on on uh, delivering tablet so 3 as a commercial uh, product instead of an open source uh, product um, in addition to that, uh, ha having a commercial agreement also allows us to offer 24-7 uh, support uh, for our enterprise customers. Um, and uh, and yeah, there, there are just some advantages to having a, a commercial uh, model uh, rather than an open source model, which has enabled us to, uh, to, to you know, employ developers who work on this uh, full time. Uh, so if you want this premium experience uh, if 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 uh, if you want more than what we can offer with with tablet so 2 then definitely consider downloading uh, tablet so 3 and, and and take a look at at the features that are available there yeah this is just uh, some of the the stuff i already said about yeah a dedicated team of developers support and so on um some of the new features of tablet editor uh, as you could also see in the screenshot before it has a new ui uh, which has full uh, high DPI multi-monitor theming support. It has this new super powerful uh, DAX editor that I mentioned. It can analyze all of your, your DAX metadata uh, offline, uh, meaning that if you make a mistake in your DAX code, you will actually see that as you type uh, your code. So you don't have to uh, to save the model back to analysis services before you, uh, you, you see if there are any syntax uh, errors in your DAX code. And it also has a diagram view. It has a new DAX scripting feature, a macro recorder for making it easier to create these uh, these uh, C sharp scripts uh, that you saw in the demo earlier. And then it has a ton of of, of uh, features that actually connect to the model and, and and consider the data in the model, like a table preview and a DAX query editor, a pivot grid. Um, it can refresh the model in the background so that you can continue working on on adding new measures and so on as the refresh is in progress. And it has uh, an integrated Vertipack analyzer that you may know from uh, DAX Studio, and it even has an integrated DAX debugger. Uh, so if you're new to DAX and you want to learn more about uh, how things like row context and filter context interoperate, then we have this DAX debugger in Tablet 3 that lets you step down into the code uh, line by line and, and evaluate variables and so on along the way. Um, so if you want to learn more about this stuff, there are videos available on YouTube uh, where you can uh, where you can see a demo of this. Or as I said earlier, you can just download Tablet 3 and, and try it uh, for 30 days uh, to see if, uh, if if it's something you like. So um, I think that's basically, yeah, I don't think we will go into a demo of Tablet 3 in, in this session. Uh, but as I said, there are plenty of stuff available uh, online uh, where you can find more. Um, but uh, yeah, we have time for questions as well. I'm happy to, to, to take some questions. I see there was one just now. Uh, what are macros in Tablet? Are they the same as scripts? Yes, that's a good question, uh, Fernando. Thank you. Um, one thing I didn't show you in, in this demo is that uh, if you have a script uh, in Tablet, so, so let me go back to one of the, the script snips. Let's take this one, for example, and we copy this script into, uh, into Tablet Editor. 
Um, now that we have this script in here, uh, we can actually save this uh, as a so-called custom action. So yeah, I, 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 my apologies on, on the naming here. In, in Tableau so 2, uh, these are called custom actions, but in Tableau so 3, they are called macros, but they are the same thing. Uh, it's just that, that we renamed them uh, to avoid confusion. Um, so if we save this as a custom action, you know, we get this little custom action dialog. We can give it a name. So let's call this push and you G demo create meshes from columns. And we indicate that to use this macro or this custom action, we should select a number of columns and then we hit OK. So now the, the deal is that I can select uh, some uh, meshes here like this one, oh, sorry, some columns. I can select these columns. And now instead of having the, the script in the scripting window, I can just right click and then I'll have the script integrated directly in the right click uh, menu. Uh, so you can create these reusable uh, scripts that are integrated directly in, uh, in Tableau Editor's UI, uh, making it, it much more easier. So if you have some scripts that, that you use a lot of times, you don't have to copy and paste the code for the script in every time. So th this feature is also available in Tableau Editor 3. The difference is that it's just called uh, macros. Uh, and then Tableau Editor 3, as I said, also has this macro uh, recorder. Uh, so it can actually generate the, the script code for you um, as you are recording the, 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 the script. So hopefully that, that clarifies that. So any other questions? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I still have time to, uh, to, to take. I'm happy to, uh, to answer any other questions you may have. Uh, just one thing, Daniel. The, that's, that DAX debugger, is it just available on Tabular Editor 3 or? Yes, uh, the the DAX debugger relies on the on some of the technology that that we have in Tableau so three. Uh, specifically, we have this uh, DAX semantic analyzer, which actually understands the the syntax and semantics of your your DAX code. And this semantic analyzer is only available in Tableau so three. We also use it for stuff like IntelliSense and syntax and semantic checking and so on. Uh, and and that's a, a very important component of of the DAX debugger. So for that reason, it, it's only available in Tablet Three. I mean, uh, if you like, I'm I'm happy to show a, a quick demo of uh, of what it does. That would be great. Yeah, sure. That would be great. Yes. So just keep in mind, again, this is Tablet Three. So this requires a, a, a commercial license to be able to use this feature. Um, but let's just uh, see how it works anyway. So here is Tableau Editor 3. I don't want to go into too much details about the, the new user interface. You, you, if you like, you can bring it over to the classic layout, uh, which looks a lot like uh, like what it looks like in, in, in Tableau Editor uh, 2. Um, but this is just a matter of preference. You can, you can design the user interface layout any way you want. Uh, so here in this case, let me connect to, um, let me connect to my retail analysis sample. Um, and so here we have, oh, that, that was the wrong one. In fact, let me let me launch Tableau Editor 3 from inside Power BI Desktop instead. So we go here and we go to the External Tools tab and we click Tableau Editor 3. And, and it's coming up here. Um, yeah. So, so the idea with the with the DAX debugger is that we can use it to uh, to 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 look more closely uh, in the DAX code on our meshes. So one option is we can use this uh, pivot grid feature. So we can create a pivot grid in uh, in Tableau Editor three, and then we can bring in uh, some of our meshes. Like let's say we want to have something like uh, we want to look at uh, total sales. Uh, so we add total sales to our mesh, and let's say we slice total sales by buyer. Uh, that was probably a bad idea. Let's slice by category instead. Uh, and now let's say for some reason we, we don't understand one of these figures is, is wrong and we want to understand what's going on. So we, we can right click on this uh, cell in the pivot table and then we can start the debugger by choosing this uh, debug this value uh, option here. So we click debug this value and then as you can see here we are actually uh, starting this uh, debug uh, session. So now you can see we, we jumped into the code. Uh, since this measure that, that we started on, um, the, the total sales measure, it relies on two other measures. Then we get this new view of the code where we bring in the definition of, of all of the dependent measures, uh, as you see here. And this then allows us to, uh, to step into the code. Now, this was actually a very, very uh, boring example. Let me take another measure instead, one that's a little more interesting. Uh, so that was this one that had something with the variance and so on. Yeah, I think this one is, is more interesting. Yeah, so let's go with this one instead. So let's debug one of these values like this one, for example. 
So we'll go in and you can see now we get the entire DAX uh, script uh, containing the DAX code for all of the measures that are involved in, uh, in this calculation. Um, and we can then uh, use uh, the, the shortcut keys here to, uh, to, to step into the code. We can view the entire call three, and then we can just navigate uh, down through the code, uh, evaluating different branches along the way. An interesting example here, we have this if uh, statement, and you can see how the, the blank part is actually grayed out. That's because the, the first uh, parameter here of the evaluation total sales last year is different from, uh, from zero. So in that case, it's it's going to evaluate this part of, of the if statement and not this part. Uh, now, if this had, had been equal to zero uh, instead, then we would see it uh, in, in, in the opposite way. So here, uh, as we just jump into the code, we can evaluate these one by one. We can even use the watch expression uh, to type something like total sales, um, is it hidden or? Yeah, total sales um, to to have other measures evaluated in the same context. So if I go back to the pivot grid, you can see this this value I'm typing here is being evaluated in the same context as I started my my debug session. Uh, and now I don't think there are any any filters in this expression. Oh yeah, I do actually have some. So so if I if I continue down uh, through the code here. And then at some point we should get to this calculate and here you can see calculate is applying a filter we're setting scenario id equal to one so now uh, as i'm getting into total sales you can see now i'm getting a different value for total sales that i had before and we can see in the evaluation context that we have the out, uh, the outer filter which was from the category where we started the debug session and then as we go into the code we now have a filter on uh, on, on scenario id and and so this way it, it you get all of this information about how the the dax evaluation is uh, is taking place uh, which is very useful uh, if you're wanting to understand some some complex dax code and and the values that uh, that it returns so this was just a, a super fast uh, demo. Uh, I actually made a session uh, a couple of months ago called uh, Deep Dive into Tableau Editor's uh, Debugger, which is available on YouTube, where you can find a lot more details about how this uh, how this works and, and how to use it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's a very powerful tool and especially useful if uh, if you often face yourself uh, not understanding exactly why, why a specific calculation uh, provides a, a particular value. Um, all right. Um, this is great. Thank you. Thank you. This debugger is boom. It's <laughs> really great. I love it. Um, for example, this that debugger, if you want to do that, it's very hard. You need to define many variables, run one by yeah. one, and then find those information. But this is great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the past, we've probably used tools like uh, DAX Studio uh, yeah. to, uh, to to create uh, lots of queries where we're testing different variables and, and uh, mm -hmm. commenting and uncommenting code and so on. And that's exactly the purpose of the debugger, that you no longer have to do this. You can just step into the code that you're interested in uh, and just evaluate uh, variables and, and inspect uh, what the values of variables are uh, along the way. So yeah, very powerful tool with a lot of investment behind it. Since we're talking about the, the commercial version anyway, let me just quickly show you the, the, the pricing. So uh, if you're just using Power BI Desktop and you just want to use Tableau Editor uh, as uh, Tableau Editor 3 uh, as an external tool for uh, for Power BI Desktop, uh, the price is just $10 a month. So, so it's the same price as, as the, the Power BI Pro uh, license for, for this uh, desktop uh, edition. So here the idea is that you get full community support uh, through our GitHub uh, website. Uh, and you can use the tool for Power BI desktop development. So everything I showed you here in the demo uh, is is what you can 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 use it for as well. So including the debugger uh, that that I showed. If you have the need to uh, to uh, to to use Tableau Editor against uh, the Power BI uh, premium endpoint, either premium per user. Uh, if you're using premium per user, you would need the bis business edition of Tableau Editor 3. And if you're using any other premium workspace like premium capacity, then you would need the, the enterprise edition of, uh, of Tableau Editor. But in terms of which features are available in the, in the tool, they are all the same. It's just a matter of, uh, of how much investment you have on, uh, on Power BI. Uh, is it limited to the number of the user? Is it just for one user? Or? Yeah. yeah, these prices are per user uh, per month. Yeah. Per user per month. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel.